Well, today I'm going to do this beautiful summer scene of Falmouth in Cornwall. You can see the beautiful, beautiful colours we've got here and the nice shapes of these um, palms or yuccas. I'm not sure what they're, palms or yuccas. And the nice colours, got lovely, lovely sort of acidy yellow green there and the nice shape of the hill and of course the cloud structure just drifting away darker nice uh, brighter cerulean sort of color there and some nice reds here and sort of ambery bluey colors as you go into the distance of course you get regression it becomes less intense uh, quite faint here in the distance a little bit darker there but there's a lot of interest going in there. Nice building in the foreground here, all the boats and the reflections. So I've got to try and capture that. So here we are, I'm going to sketch it in, just a, a rough uh, outline, just as a guide uh, to give me some sort of structure. Um, and my horizon line, of course, is over the halfway. You don't want to divide your your screen in half that wouldn't look good so I'm a little over that you don't have to divide it into thirds as I say but this is an approximate guide and we've got that sort of bank I don't know if you can see this um, I'll try and do it a little a little darker here with the um, hillside and of course you've got all the uh, the different hillside trees here, all different colours. And uh, just here, jutting into our picture, we've got these lovely yuccas or pines, I really. Palms, it might be palms, of course. This part of the UK, you can get quite nice palms. It's very mild temperatures down here in Devon and Cornwall you can see pines growing but they're nice architectural shapes nice spiky spiky structures vegetation would lend themselves if we can get them right nice and sharp and uh, yeah, reddish color here um, and of course with the um, must try and capture this the uh, the estuary coming down like this that's our shoreline and in that of we've got nice structures nice Lovely little houses. Well, that's not so little actually. It's holiday homes or hotels. So I've got just a rough outline. Of course, I won't be delivering it absolutely accurately. These are too far in the distance. A nice house along there with a, a lovely red roof structure and vegetation here and the shoreline I must try and keep that light somewhat sandy and lighter color and just here in the just the middle distance there's a nice copper colored vegetation and on this hillside we have it's a lovely acid bright yellowy yellowy green so i have to try and get that right and a nice house on the hillside there and along here we've got more of the the palm sticking out like this coming into our view and 
I look closely, we've got, yes, just up here I have a road coming up onto the hillside there. And now do I put in that building in the foreground? East roadway making its way up into these houses to try and stay with the same colors but again rules are to be broken but you should at least know them and recognize the dangers so let me get this little got a little palette here of some lovely French uh, sennelier watercolors which I was given as a Christmas present so I'm going to try and use these change my mind I think I might go for this phthalo blue a slightly different blue so I'll make myself a little bit of a puddle here and remember that watercolor will watercolor paints um, dry quite a bit lighter so I'm going to just sweep it down here and the way I've got the easel tilted, it will run down and will give me a diffuse colour, nice and light. Bring it right down here. We need to get it in this right down till the hillside here side comes across across there I'm taking a little bit behind those palms and um, perhaps I should bring it in behind those palms as well That's a bit fierce. Let's get a bit of colour in there as well for our water side, which comes right down. this waterside property here All right. now I'm going to wipe out some of these strong colors I want to keep it light. Got some tissue, my squirrel brush now, which is mopping up. I've got to keep this side quite light. And I want the, the line of the clouds that we have coming in this direction so our eye is taken in like that and here also we can take some line out 
and just over this sky, over this hillside, I could put a little bit of purpley colour. A slight hint with a bit of red there. Pull it up so you can see. Got a little bit of red here. Little, uh, a little purpley colour. And as that's a little bit, I want to nice, this is a little bit damp at this point. So I can drop a little bit of colour in there and it comes behind those little palms. This is in the sky. A little soft, I want nice soft edges. Just a little bit of softening with my finger there a little hint of purpley haze in the sky there I think we should leave it that sometimes you have to let watercolour do its thing if you fiddle with it um, it can um, go a little bit raw. I've got a little bit more purple. I think I can drop into there. Right. That has to line up somewhat with that. Right. Don't fiddle. My maxim, but it's very hard. I think just a little bit more. A little bit more will do it. Uh, now I'll go on to my other set of colours I have here. These are uh, Ra uh, Dala Rowney, and um, these are lovely, lovely watercolours. I've got the whole gamut of colours here. This is a lovely sap green that I want to do for this. You can see, I'll pull that up again so you can see. Can you see on the hillside, that's a lovely yellowy, acidy green. So I think I'm going to drop some of that in now. Well, we can, and I've mixed it here. Sap green, it's quite bright. There is, um, a brightness about this this photograph about this picture this time that this was taken so let's see what we can do to bring in this screen and it comes right down and disappears behind where we're going to put our palms and here this is again I've got some in this area I must try and keep my colors fresh try and do one sweep rather than muddy them up which is so easily done so easily done. In this bit of the hillside here, we'll again get some, some, uh, I think some, what should I call that? Madder, sort of rose madder -y colour. Mix it there and give me some of this colour on this hillside here. Tickle it in. I can drop other colours into it as well as we come down. Um, let's get it 
it a little stronger there. A little green mixed with it. And right on the top of our hill we've got we've got some more got just sweep in the main colours there. This glaring white. I think we'll have a little bit of brown in it though. Make a sort of reddish brown. A little bit of matter there. A little brown. Try and sweep in some colour. some reds up here. Now Viridian's a bit on the bright side so we'll tone that down a bit with a little bit of um, hookers. Again you shouldn't use um, hookers on its own. You can mix it with other colours to give you all sorts of greens. You can make absolutely numerous greens out of it but I'm putting a little bit of ultramarine now this one here with that blue and with that green with those mixture of greens because I want a, a darkish green to put along the, the distant hillside but we don't want them too dark of course as I said they can the colors regress into the distance. Again, I've got to try and balance. This regression, we're getting the, um, the darkness right. As I said, it's the, it's the mixture of light and dark, which Gives you some sense of distance. It was down there, and there's also more here hiding away behind there. And while we're at it, let's. I think I need to bring more down to this area. Let's put some more greens in. Got to deal with all these. And uh, come down to the water's edge there. And the hotel. Um, but let's... I'm just wondering how do I deal with this. There's some sort of ready colors more. I still need to bring some red I think into the picture. Well, certainly reddish. Reddish is the word. Down. Oh that's a little bit muddy. Got to be careful not to muddy up things. Easily done with watercolour. Can you try and keep it fresh? Yes. I think we've got a little bit of red going on here. Of, let's put a little bit of green in there. Right, do that. The spikiness of these these palms projecting into our view here. And they come 
certainly down into this area here. So we need to get plenty in there. Try and get our shape. I'm going to put some different colours and we've got um, we've got it. Let's get more in there. Some more of the greens. And we've got the lighter ones the yellow ones of course so you can do that adding a bit of yellow or a little less water in your mix will help but um, again you've got to just think a little bit about it it can help certainly bluer quite so uh, readily so we've got to try and balance that um, do I need a little bit more perhaps I can do a few strokes down here again with my viridian very finely and of course in the middle We've got, let's put a bit of blue with that. That's just a bit too bright. Let's try and calm it down a little bit. And we've got more here. Must be careful not to carry it away and you lose the the form of the uh, of the like this in this direction don't they bring a little bit in here so it will help frame our picture so I think I should leave that for the moment or oh, absolutely quite different greens and I think we could use a little in this direction bit of a little bit more yellow I think not yellow enough there let's let's get rid of that for a moment try and keep your palettes clean where necessary of course sometimes a bit of leftover colors is just what you need but sometimes you need fresh fresh yellows or fresh colors generally so i think ah oh, yes that's a bit better just using a bit of my Sennelier colours, beautiful colours, particularly uh, you want some brights, some for botanical painting, you might find these Sennelier colours, what you like. You. we're all individual we all got our favorites along the shore on the shoreline there's some bright yellows just 
just the way they are with the structures of the on the roadway that comes up into the town there it's a little bit vivid perhaps um, <coughs> Right, I think I need to put in a little uh, What should I have? Yes, I've got some goldy colours Could I could own gold in my Sinelia set They're gorgeous colours Catch that sunshine. Like that goldy colour. Hmm, I don't know. Yes. I think we'll leave that for the moment. Some of these rooftops. make some shapes that suggest rooftops when we put some windows to suggest a, a nice building we can do that some roof shapes and colors And with watercolour you'll try to re retain the whites, the whites, it's transparent watercolour, different colours. we do here do we need a different change of tone I think little muted blues somewhere to put some I need to put some different roof shapes or we'll just get these get some windows and Actually, I think a little. I've got some reddish. Let's get some more of that cobalty color in. More water there. bit of phthalo. So, oh, I've lost my picture in a minute. All right, so we'll get some. That's a little bit too blue. We need a bit of green in it, I think. A little side to side motion. All right, let's have a bit 
of water there. And I think that's just a bit too greeny. Let's Trying to create the reflections, little horizontal lines like this, to bring our reflections out to meet us here. More brush now, go back to something which, oh I don't know, I might add a little bit of yellow, yellowy colour to try and capture some of the reflections of the buildings coming out. Coming down a little bit, a little bit more yellowy, I think. Um, what have I got here? Yellowy gold. Let's see if that can do do the trick. It's not so bad. Maybe I've got a number six here now. It's got a bit of a tip on it. I think I need to fade out that a little bit. Right. Um, and a bit darker along the along the water's edge. I need to have some darker colour too in order for it to contrast with the lights that I've got there. So take a little bit of ultramarine and a remnants of the other colors I've got. You're just looking for a neutral tone, really. Um, so I want to try and introduce, I don't know if I'm out in your way, can you see? That's Darken it up just a little bit. Again, as I said, you, you've got to have your lights and darks. If you don't, your, your lights just don't look light enough. I've got some more darks in here. But, um, and I think... got a little bit of a dark coming in here and I think I need to put more of our shadows here oops what happened to my picture ah lost it
All right. Well, there's a little bit more of the... Uh... Where's my photographs gone? Nope, I lost it. Right. Um, I'm just reviewing the situation. As Fagin says, um, I think I need to get some darks, more darks in here, a little bit more darker here, and maybe a few more yellows into my spikes. So uh, what do we think? Well, I haven't got any yachts in either. I wonder if I've got any, if I've got enough darks. The trouble is you put, you know, try and get so close to your photograph, you will, uh, it might work as a photograph, but it doesn't necessarily work as a painting. So I uh, have to be a little bit cautious not to overdo the situation. So let's, um, let me see, let's get some, some nice yellows in. See if we can add some, some warmth and color a little bit more to these. Yes, there's a few bits here that would benefit. there but again I'm using some Sennelier colors here which are just superb for these little botanical brightness that you need And I think we've put some little darks into our, in the heart of um, our palms. So let, let's get some blue in there. Get some blue, make a nice dark green with blue. So put a blue, a little bit of hooker's green, mix them together. That's better. We've got something here. My hooker's green, never use it on its own. It doesn't work very well. So, oh uh, yes, let's give a little bit of darkness down here. And a little bit wetter, I think I need. That's it. Nice dark, a little bit of a bit more blue. Again, let's try and beef it up a little bit more. Again, it's this age-old battle with any painting, but especially watercolour. When have you done enough? going to put the um, that building in the in the foreground but I don't think it adds anything by doing by being there so I think we'll just forget that and um, some of these I could perhaps put a bit more of my reflection in there and over here right now what do we think um bit darker there, a little bit more dark. In 
into the heart of our bit in there just stroke them on gently if you can right I think down in here can do a little dark painting set which I was given for Christmas. So it's a lovely golden colours which I can use a little bit there to come out. And we have some golden colours there as well, but the majority is I must see if I can get some tangle of edge here without turning it to mud, which is something you've got to guard against. A little change of Golden colour slightly reddier now. And we've got some Some little reds in here and gold. So let's see if I can get a bit more red into that inside there. Got some thing here. And then what about some little rooftop? And some house. Here. I think I might have a bit of a little bit of um, burnt sienna as well. was quite a tangle of vegetation here. I've got a little bit of sienna there. I think that's raw sienna actually. Not burnt sienna, raw sienna. Gives some depth. I'll put a little bit of darkness. So I'm hoping that your eye is going in there, um, is drawn into it. Just wet that up a little bit. I think we need we could put a little dark in there. Yes, I think that's that's better. And have I got enough dark in there? And I'm wondering whether I should introduce, go for it, see if I could introduce some reflection. I wonder if I can make that work. Let's have a look. Yes, maybe I've got a bit of Sad, um, sandy coloured here. Um, I forgot what I call it. 
now. Let's get a bit of, um, mm, I wonder, what colour is that? Sort of streaks of yellow, isn't it? Let's get a bit of yellow going there. A nice, lovely little colour. So I think I should probably call a halt to that before I muddy it up a little bit, which is always the danger. Should it be dark here? Yeah, it'll be dark in the foreground. Yes, you've just got to have those darks. If you don't have them, bit of Chinese white and make a few marks which might suggest to us that we've uh, we've got a yacht. Now where should I put it? There's um, like that. And we put another one here. And I think we'll put one in here too. Lots of little whites in places, which we could add. And along this shoreline, I did have some white as well. And the yellows. And of course these lights will um, watercolour will dry lighter. So I've got to remember that. And I will put in here There's a house with this dry brush that I've got. What a dry brush that. When we say dry brush, we mean a brush with very little water on it. is needed on one of our yachts. I'll tip it out a bit. Suggest that 
somewhat hidden there. When you realize you're not actually adding to the situation, then you should perhaps stop. And I think I'm getting there now. So with that, I think we'll leave it at that. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, again, as I said, if you can, go and visit these gorgeous places in Devon and Cornwall. You will not dis be disappointed, but of course, you shouldn't be doing it right now with the COVID situation. But this won't last forever. We will soon, with a bit of luck, be out of this, this miserable nightmare that we're in.